verification devices are utilized to verify the identity of individuals whose data have been captured during the registration process. The device-based verification process will determine eligible voters on polling day. The minority leader in parliament alleges that seven of such devices procured by the Electoral Commission have gone missing. Electoral Commission confirms that seven of the biometric devices are indeed missing. I urge the CID and the Ghana Police Service to immediately issue a statement giving us the details of their investigation so far. He indicates that the integrity of the election could be compromised if the root of the problem is not identified and addressed. I am concerned and worried because that devices in the hands of an unknown person can compromise the future elections that Ghana will have. The family of the later Jusso MP Dr. John Kuma visited Parliament to officially inform leadership of his demise. The House will rise for the Easter festivities on Wednesday. Duke Bentopoku, TV3 News, Parliament House, Accra. And now to the executive. President Kufado stands on the anti-LGBT bill has been criticized for interfering with parliament's work. This follows the president's letter asking the legislative arm of government to cease and desist from presenting the bill to him for assent. Marina Egbata tracks the reaction over the last 12 hours. To assent or not to assent? The question which has hanged over President Kufado's head over the last few weeks after Parliament passed the controversial anti-LGBTQ plus bill. And as the walls closed in on March 14, the President's response has drawn quite the controversy. According to the President via a letter from his Secretary, Parliament on the set date attempted transmitting the controversial bill to the seat of government while the Executive was away on a Cabinet retreat. That action, according to the president, and any subsequent attempt would be improper and equally improper for his office to receive the bill until the Supreme Court determines the matters raised against the bill. Matters upon which the Attorney General advised the president not to take any step in relation to the bill until the two suits challenging the bill are determined. To this end, the president, via his secretary, wants parliament to cease and desist from transmitting the bill to his office until matters before the apex court are resolved. The responses have been swift, with former president John Mahama describing the letter as unconstitutional. President, secretary, in need to me, say, obey to me, I trust our letter. No? If you say parliament, a uh, uh, constitution, and I shame Rama almost say, Omu ye, sa, a yinu ya, Omu Fanko president. And to me, I can say, Ma on yene juma, say, on fam reumpo. Obey to me, I can say, Obey say, my president and sign. And to me, train eight years Supreme Court. But don't to me, throw letter, and my clerk say, Mom fa, and my president. Legal practitioner and law lecturer Justice Remsai on his part argues the president is deliberately creating confusion to prevent himself from assenting to the bill. What he's doing really is to play politics with the issue. In other words, he's going to succeed. He's going to succeed if all we are doing is to be doing back and forth. Whichever way a draft time, you know, moves and, and then he, he, ha he gets his way. Lack of candor, it is lack of you know honesty which is causing the current situation to happen. And I know the president has no honest belief mm. that the court are going to hear the matter today. He has no honest belief in the court processes that have been commenced. So all what he's doing is to delay the matter and, and frustrate the process. Senior lawyer Yao Berima, who also argues the president's secretary was wrong, wants the clerk of parliament to send the letter to the presidency again. I have a problem. When we are being called to split hairs on this issue, whether the clerk should send it or not, the bill has been passed. When it is passed, the president should be informed, notified. And, if, and that is the duty of the clerk of parliament. And so the fact that he sends it does not mean that the president should give assent to it. And uh, I would not have any problem at all if the bill is sent to the president for the president to react 
any way that he wants. Other opinions, like Professor of Politics Ranito Jampo, all argue the presidency should not be making the request it did to Parliament. The Speaker of Parliament, Aban Bagwin, meanwhile, is yet to officially comment on the matter, which will continue to split heads for quite a while. Now, Member of Parliament for Old Tafo Vincent Asifua has meanwhile justified the presidency's letter asking Parliament to desist from transmitting the anti-gay bill. Here's more. The letter from the Executive Secretary to the President to the Clerk of Parliament has elicited varied responses from between Parliament and outside the House. In spite of contrary views, MP for Old Tafo argues that the President's action is backed by law. The president got it right in this letter um, when he indicated that there is an application in the Supreme Court and the said application is to injunct the um, legislative arm of government that is parliament not to proceed to ferry the, uh, the bill to him for consideration. Um, I'm saying so because um, it is settled law and also in the decision of the Supreme Court, that is adjective versus Abumufu the second, that at any point in time that an application has been sent to the court, it is deemed to be an injunction. I disagree with the minorities call, call that because the attempt, or if you like, an application has been sent to the Supreme Court, it is not enough to be considered as an injunction. That, that, that cannot be the position of the law. But MP for Tamale South disagrees. He wants Parliament to disregard the letter from the presidency. Politically, what power does the present secretary have writing to the clerk of Parliament and not the president himself writing directly to the Speaker of Parliament as is required of our standing order so that officially this can be read as communication from the president. So ideally, this paper means nothing and should be ignored by the clerk because communication to parliament must be communication signed by the president, addressed to the speaker of parliament as is required of our standing orders, whether old or new. Flag bearer of the NDC, John Domani Mahama, has questioned the decision of the President Secretary Nana Santibedio to, to issue a letter asking the Clerk of Parliament from uh, transmitting the anti LGBT bill to the presidency. John Mahama has described the letter as unlawful, smacking of insult to the institution of Parliament. Take a listen. His position on LGBT has been established. After a month of passing the controversial bill. It has been hit with lawsuits where the president is seen a haven to hasten slowly. The flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, has been hit in hard at the handless of the president on the matter. And so I know pay me sorry, I mean, who let her be a free president, secretary for echo parliament. Airman warning says, Sakrata no more farm ma president office in Pope. Now, Obi Obey lawyer, Obi Oye lawyer, be able to catch us. A president secretary in need to me, sir, obey to me a trust our letter. No, if you say parliament, a constitution, and a Ashem Rama almost say, Omu ye, sir, a yin new year, Omu Fanko president. Now, she has any or throw a letter, no poor, and your boo or throw a letter, no BBB to say, Oh, to me be a chain parliament. Now, sign your man, um, I'm say. Meanwhile, on day two of his OT regional tour, John Mahama has had engagements with the people of Inchimuru, Basa, and Brewiniase. We saw Kanye and Najwa, who are now prep, neko, na tiko. We saw them now back akra, na tiko, na back akra, na tiko. Enti, mijina mo nemo. Mokanya no efri tamale ene eba a jumedi efe so enye ECG enu ye netco minimse omupeni ni bi efe e kacho omuse ye hia se ye de substation ebe ba kitekrache ne kwasani damankoha 
se ne beya e be peja kaniano a hondin kom la cluche tv3 new in quanta south well, away from politics, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana is requesting quarantine of Global Fund Health Commodities at the port after clearance and a full quality control assessment by the Food and Drugs Authority, FDA. This follows the health ministry's claim that it has begun clearing the drugs which have been stuck at the airport since August 2023. The Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana warned that the country may run out of antiretrovirals and other critical medications for tuberculosis and malaria by May due to government's inability to clear health commodities worth some $45 million at the port. But the Ministry of Health says it started lifting containers of drugs from the port since Friday, March 15. Currently, as at Friday, we lifted some of these drugs from the port. Records are there to show. So I may not know the source of the information they have. And in as much as they are our partners, they also come in sometimes to assist us or help us. And so maybe it's an oversight or there is another information that they want to put on our table. He stated that funding was required from the Ministry of Finance to cover the cost of ECOWAS and African Union levies on drugs. These levies are levies that Ghana as a country cannot take it out that we are not going to pay. So what we do is to write to Minister of Finance for support. And I must say that since August last year till date, both Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Health have been so collaborative to ensure that after this clearance, we may not come back to this same issue again. Executive Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Dr. Dennis Senawiti, however, noted that there had been no such communication on any clearance. I heard him saying that as of Friday, we are not privy to any containers that have been cleared on Friday, if mm. that is the information. I think they should make it available to Ghanaians because the, the information we have, and this is coming from uh, 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 sources within the Global Fund, a plethora of issues. For us, if they have resolved some, they should be able to put it out in the public domain. Because these are issues that the Global Fund has raised with the ministry. The health commodities include malaria rapid diagnostic test kit, RTDs, RDTs, insecticide treated nets, antiretrovirals, among others sourced from the Global Fund. And uh, the Ghana Armed Forces has confirmed an Air Force helicopter made an emergency landing at Bonsukrom near Agona and Kwanta. 21 passengers made up of staff of the Ghana National Ghana Gas Company and uh, air crew are said to have been on board conducting routine offshore power line inspection of the Chiabo gas plant when the incident occurred. A statement issued by the Ghana Armed Forces indicates that all the passengers on board have been accounted for and there were no fatalities and they have however been evacuated and are currently undergoing routine medical checkup and meanwhile preliminary assessment have commenced to ascertain the cause of the incident Well, this is a development that interests us, and so we'll keep up on it and surely give you updates in our subsequent bulletins. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the first news bulletin of the day on TV3 right here on New Day. And let's do more news. The electricity company of Ghana, ECG, has up till March 25 to pay at least 262 million cities to various players in the power sector. It has also been ordered to release a load shedding timetable to guide power consumers on recent outages being experienced in the country. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PRC, issued the orders after determining that the power distributor was disregarding a presidential directive to disburse monthly revenue according to an agreed formula to all stakeholders in the value chain. The cash water mechanism is a revenue distribution model that requires the electricity company of Ghana, ECG, to pay independent power producers graded as A-level stakeholders at least 514 million cities monthly. Such stakeholders include Senpower, 
Amandi and Asogli Level B stakeholders are also to receive 300 million cities monthly. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, in a report analyzing revenue distribution, noted that ECG had fallen short of allocation to the stakeholders by 262 million cities. It has, as a result, issued orders with clear timelines requiring ECG to release the said funds. Payment of the outstanding sums are to be affected by March 25. ECG is also required to submit incidents reports by March 27 on outages recorded in its operational areas since January 1, 2024. The power distributor is additionally required to show proof of informing consumers of these outages. ECG has recently announced possible outages due to overloading of its transformers. PURC wants a clear outline of how power consumers will be affected and when new transformers will be installed. The Commission notes it has the power to impose sanctions, including pushing for prosecution and possible J-term of two years, so this orders be ignored. And now let's talk sports. 2020 Olympic medalist Samuel Techi booked his place in the medal zone after defeating Tunisian Mehdi Dridi in the light welterweight quarterfinals on Tuesday. He joined six other Ghanaians who are short of winning medals at the competition. Billy Shen has more in this report. On Monday, there were five, and now on Tuesday evening, there are seven. Two more Ghanaian boxers have made it to the medal zone after uh, Mohamed Amadou and Samuel Techi won their respective bouts on Tuesday evening. The main attraction, of course, was Samuel Techi, who was a 2020 Olympic Games medalist. And a lot of fans came in to see what he could do, and he managed to defeat his opponent in the three rounds of boxing. Now, the fans who came in to watch were happy with the results and are confident that Ghana can at least bring a gold medal to the 2023 African Games when it comes to boxing. Definitely, I think in the Kujawe division, um, Buko Makunsan, and then this uh, Kombi guy in the featherweight division, I think they can get gold for Ghana. Oh, Samo Techi, yeah, and Mohamed I think so. Yeah, they, they can also do better. I think Joseph, Co Joseph Komet can take gold for Ghana. I think he can do it. I can say boldly, we can get four gold medals for Ghana in boxing. Wednesday is expected to be a resting day for all boxers and so the semi-finals will take place on Thursday and the fans will get to see how many Ghanaians will make it to the final and battle for gold. A gold medal that they haven't won in the African Games in the last 33 years. Bill Eshen, for 3 Sports from the Bukum Boxing Arena. Well, on that spot note, we end the morning news. For more news updates, just log on to our website, is 3 newscom My colleagues, Roland, Cookie, and uh, are standing by to continue with the show after this break. Have a good morning.